Hey you guys, it's me Ruben React. So I'm so happy today because we're gonna do a video about something completely different, uh, which is uh, well, like you know my taste in music and stuff. But now I want to respond to things that I enjoy watching on YouTube myself, and also uh, things that I actually have experience with a lot. So it's gonna be about my country. We good guess, uh, which is the Netherlands. Uh, Holland, I like to say personally, it sounds, I don't know, it sounds easier. Um, here we go. Oh, nice music. So, it's uh, from a company that is called Europia. I'm just going to go back to show you. Europia. Give them a thumbs up and a subscribe. Video started. I actually don't know this place, by the way. So, it looks epic. I have no idea where it is. I don't know everything, uh, even if it's a smaller country, I have not been everywhere. They better the put my city is a in this. Densely populated country. If they don't put my city, Schiedam, in this, I'm going to be so epically upset. Because, like, Schiedam is so touristic at the moment. And also, uh, it's one of the most beautiful cities in, in the Netherlands, I can say this from experience. And we have the biggest windmills in the whole world, and in all of Holland. And we have K to One, all you Americans who are watching. K to One vodka is coming from Schiedam, from my city. And uh, Geneva, which is very famous. So, like, it's the number one vodka in the US. So, it's like super, super famous. And uh, gin, uh, we call it Geneva, but it's gin. It comes from Holland. We invented it, and that's from my city, Schiedam. In part reclaimed from the sea, with about half of its land lying below sea level. Many tourists only come to the Netherlands to visit Amsterdam, but yes. Holland has plenty to offer outside its capital. Crisscrossed with canals, the flat landscape is perfect for cycling. Like my favorite cities, just before starting, I know it's doing, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> uh, my favorite cities, first of all, um, okay, Schiedam, Delft, Rotterdam, Utrecht, Amsterdam, Haarlem, um, what is the other one? What is the, I'm forgetting one. Harlem. Leiden. Uh, I don't know if I have to choose 10 if I would put Leiden. Leiden is epic though. I don't know. I have to choose 10 then. Okay, so I make 10 plus 2 or whatever. Uh, then uh, Tessel. Very beautiful island. A lot of German people, if you're watching, hey, they all know it. It's like those islands on the top and Tessel is the biggest one. Um, then, and it's on, uh, Petromwan, how do you say that in English? Uh, on UNESCO in 2014, it was on UNESCO. And, um, uh, then I would choose, hmm, like tourist attractions or cities? Because tourist attractions, then I would choose Keukenhof and Kinderdijk and another city that I did not visit yet, uh, personally is um, uh, Eindhoven, which I think is very epic. Then also you have uh, Nijmegen, very epic. We'll do a video about that next. Those cities I've never visited yet. Uh, Maastricht, I've been there, is very nice. Uh, very famous also. Uh, uh, Scheveningen, which is uh, The Hague, uh, I would put it in there. So there you have some of my favorite uh, cities. With historic Gitorn. town centers and classic windows. Sorry for stopping. Gitorn, I forgot, which is that place you always see on pictures with all the... Uh, yeah, you basically have only water there in all of Holland, but there it's like you cannot really have... You have to do everything by boat. That's like where most of the tourists see pictures also. It's very famous. Mills sprinkled okay. across the country. During I've spring been time, the flower garden. I've been on this boat. When I was a teenager, we went to a museum uh, with school. And this is VOC Schip. And it's from the Dutch East Company time. And uh, um, if this is the one in Amsterdam, well, I think it is. But in Amsterdam, there is a huge one. And we went there and we went also to the, to the, to the, what is the name of that? Uh, other museum it was a micro yeah it's something with biology i don't remember exactly. gardens become great tourist attractions I providing think this is a bold spectacle of vivid colors here's a look it's at this the... kind of windmills that you have like seven in schiedam six or seven 
And they're the biggest in Holland. And uh, this one looks nice, so I don't know where it is. Best places to visit in the Netherlands. This looks like your average place when you go towards a city. You usually pass this kind of path. Whoa. This bridge is going like... Where's the end? I don't... Is it the Afsluit Dike? No, it's not. Okay, I don't know which bridge it is, but it's really, really long. This looks like Tessel. Yes, this is Tessel, I think, because I see the red uh, uh, lighthouse. I always say firehouse, Number but 10, it's lighthouse. Gouda. Gouda is a typical Dutch city with lots of buildings and pretty canals and is a popular destination for a day trip thanks to its great rail and high... Okay, I cannot say I disagree. I have been in Gouda and it, I had a very good experience. I had a uh, very delicious stroopwafels and um, I saw this house in the middle, which is epic and the big church. And uh, yeah, for the cheese also, I had a very good experience, which in Holland, I'm used to that. So, but for tourists thinking about you guys, the tourists, the cheese is epic there. So, um, Everybody knows it. The city is famous for its cheese, syrup yeah. waffles, candles, yeah. and its clay pipes. Attractions in Gouda include the... They should not say syrup waffles because that confuses Americans. It's called a stroopwafel. Just use the word stroopwafel. It's a, it's a, a waffle with caramel. Because if you say syrup waffle, it's like, it's like they think about a normal waffle where you put syrup. No, it's a stroopwafel beautiful 15th century town hall and the amazing glass windows in St. Yeah, Jan's this, Kirk. This the compact insane. city center is entirely ringed by canals and yeah. is a mere five minutes walk from the station. Okay, this is very famous, this. We also have that in another place in Holland. I think it's in Amstelveen. I'm not sure. Dutch people let me know. There's a very famous cheese market where I've personally never been. I mean, you cannot do everything. Huh? Um... Funny story, actually, when you live in Holland, you don't really visit a lot. Usually you just, but then when you meet somebody from abroad, you visit all the places. So people who are from other countries, I guess you recognize that also. Because most of the things I visited was with people that were from other countries. And they made me discover like all of Holland, basically. Not all of Holland, but most, most of it. So the cheese market, epic. This even looks a bit like Schiedam, like you have this in every city in Holland, in a lot of cities, like Amsterdam is the most famous for that, but it looks a bit like Schiedam too, we have this kind of uh, Dordrecht too. Yeah. This looks more like Delft a bit, I'm comparing it. I will stop comparing because maybe you don't know the cities. So number 10 is Gouda, okay. That's like number logical. nine, Rotterdam, the oh, second. My city. That's the city where I like basically grew up. Like Schiedam is a, a direct neighbor of Rotterdam, so I used to go to Rotterdam every chance I get because in Schiedam you cannot go clubbing. So we all go clubbing when we are young in Rotterdam, and it's just such a beautiful city. I've seen it evolved because I've been for I'm from eighty five, and I've been visiting Schied uh, Rotterdam since I was there studying in like 2000, 2001, 2002. So, um, and before that, even to go party. So, uh, f as for me, it was like five, 10 minutes away. Rotterdam is uh, one of my uh, personal favorite cities. And also I've seen it like develop and change with all the new buildings. It was already a kind of small Manhattan, but it's, it became like an amazing Manhattan. That's even like, for me personally, even topping the real Manhattan and the real, <laughs> like, it's it became amazing. Like, really, there is no other city like it. And it's the biggest harbor in Europe and the world. Uh, I think now it's in China, but it used to be for years and years and years. And um, then also, uh, yeah, Rotterdam is just famous for the architecture. And I also used to take, uh, instead of a taxi, which is, was like, a bit boring for me. I used to take a, a, a taxi boat. 
because for my city Schiedam we have the harbor too, which is called the Maas. And you can go from there to Rotterdam with a boat, with a taxi boat. And it's epic. It goes so fast and it's not more expensive than a normal taxi. It's the same price. The largest city in the Netherlands, Rotterdam is home to one of the biggest and busiest ports in the world, with yes, numerous waterways crisscrossing the city, having sustained considerable damage. I'm still frustrated that now it's become one of the, I mean, it's number three now, but uh, for me, it will always stay number one because when I grew up, it, they always said it's the biggest in the world. So for me, it's the biggest in the world. <laughs> During the Second World War, the city is now characterized by future... Oh, by the way, sorry to go back. I'm going to be pl plenty of details in my video, huh? Uh, because I'm a guy that's really into details. This, those buildings, they added them later. This one, the big one. Um, do you see my arrow on the screen? Well, those big buildings, the white one and the red one, they added them later. And the big one in the back, the big tower that's just in front of the central station. Uh, that's a hotel. Uh, the, it was there for a while already. But those one, I find they, they are really... It's very unique architecture, like we are famous for that interior design architecture. Dutch are like very good in that. And considerable damage during the Second World War, the city is now characterized by futuristic... Okay. That's the exactly the, the, the road, the, 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 the road I take with a water taxi that is going towards Rotterdam. That's this road. So it's very wide, so the taxi just can go full speed, the taxi boat, and it's so much fun. I can recommend you to do that, really. Really. An innovative architecture, although there is still an underlying... Okay, so going back, seeing all the details and everything. Uh, so that's what I said. These two buildings are like the new Twin Towers. That's like basically, uh, we call them like that because we, we, we just give them this name. And they are uh, added like three or four years ago. And uh, this is Hotel New York which is a very, very beautiful, famous restaurant, like all, all over Holland. And this bridge, which is called uh, the Zwaan, is called like that because it, the Zwaan in Dutch is a swan. So it looks like a swan. And uh, I was there, believe it or not, like I've been prepared for this video all my life, I guess, uh, with the inauguration and with fireworks with my friend uh, Lionel. Hey, Lionel, if you're watching, <laughs> and his mother. It were fireworks, it was the inauguration. And uh, uh, it was just a huge celebration. And it was when I was a kid. So it was, I was 12. So let's say that bridge has been existing for 25 years, maybe 30. The city is now characterized by futuristic no, and innovative 25. architecture. Although there is still an underlying grittiness to the place. Rotterdam is a lively and diverse place with great museums. Uh, this one too, it's relatively new. Um, yeah, those are the two. Uh, yeah. Cultural attractions and, of course, fantastic dining options befitting... So that's the funny thing about Rotterdam. When you are on this bridge, uh, uh, the, the, the other bridge is, is, um, is, has another name. But it's just when you go this way, and it's uh, the most famous bridge, basically. This one is famous too, but that one is even more famous. Um, wait, no, sorry, I'm confusing things. Well, anyway, one of those two bridges or this bridge, I used to walk there a lot, uh, to go to this part here with those, uh, twin tower buildings, because that's where you have all the things like the theater. I used to work there also, uh, and, uh, the hotel New York where I used to go a lot. And, uh, it's so funny because you see here the, the very typical Dutch architecture with all the new architecture so it's really like a special there's a very special atmosphere if you walk over that bridge which i don't know the, the name now and i'm annoyed by it i'm sorry uh this one is called the zwaan but i was talking about the other bridge um yeah and that's like a bridge where we put fireworks with new years and everything of such a large metropolis so it is this bridge i think and um and it's just an amazing atmosphere where you walk there. Even if it's windy, it just you, you just, just feel at home. You just feel it just feels like you're on holidays, basically, even for Dutch people. And uh, this is where is the cinema, I think, if I'm correct. And then you have the KPN building, which is here, which is like a mobile. Okay. So continuing to the inner city. Oh, Erasmusbrug. Okay. 
So it's not that one. That's this one, the Eras Erasmus Brug. Um, and that's also the one you saw on Eurovision. Okay, and that one has been existing a bit longer, I think. Uh, this uh, is called, um, uh, what's it called? Well, she's going to say it, but this is an epic place because uh, inside there are all kinds of painting and it's huge and you have so much food you just cannot choose. You're just lost for words. You're like, what do I, what do I choose? There is anything you want. It's like a huge food market, uh, the, the market hall it's called. And this building just behind is the, uh, this is, was a library with those funny yellow things. I think it's inspired by Pompidou in Paris with those funny tubes. Uh, and this one is called the pencil, we call it the potload, uh, potload uh, appartement or I don't know, potload brug. No, a uh, potload uh, place <laughs> because it looks like a pencil. Potload is pencil in Dutch, so you see it look, really looks like a pencil. That one. Uh, so you see all the all the all the paintings, and then you have all all kind of uh, floors inside. There are different floors. I think it was before. Yeah, you see there are things going down. We have even more shops, and it's just something you you don't want to miss it. It's amazing. And I'm saying that because I just discovered that uh, it has been built. Sorry, four years ago. Just four years ago. So uh, it's not that old, uh, and four or five, and uh, those ones are my favorite because they are the not this one but the one behind. This is um, how do you call it? Not mango, but papaya. The one behind are coconuts, and in Holland, what I always love to do is drink uh, from uh, young coconuts, and the juice. Oh, it's so. And this is a place where we hang out and where we go. You see, we have poffertjes here, what you can eat. Poffertjes are like bitterballen. It's a bit uh, one of the most famous food from Holland. It's those small, tiny pancakes. And they're, they are so epically good. I, my favorite is with ice cream, strawberry, and uh, whipped cream. Uh, fresh whipped cream, not like epic. With hot chocolate it's in winter. Or in summer, doesn't matter. Uh, and then uh, this is very old church that has been there for very. You see, so so after the Second World War, there are still some things that left, and that's why it's a very interesting city, uh, because it has been uh, uh, through a lot of uh, uh, changes, and uh, yeah, that's just uh, what I wanted to say. <laughs> Okay, I get distracted a lot because I'm I know so much about Rotterdam that okay this part I've been there. Just... So those are the cube uh, apartments, and they have been built when I was studying there when I was a teenager, which was like between two thousand and two thousand five, I think, or maybe even a bit before. Uh, it was like a huge thing in all of Netherlands because. Uh, nowhere else in the world they have this architecture where it feels like the houses are falling down but they're not and it's really really nice and uh, I saw another reaction video about Rotterdam which I'm gonna do Nijmegen and Rotterdam uh, then uh, this it's like the buildings are falling down but inside it's normal so you, you can visit them when you go to Rotterdam seriously I advise you to go to Rotterdam it's just it, it became one of the it is it has always been but like it became one of the most amazing things like in the whole world basically i went to school close to here so my school was somewhere behind there which is and this area is called black and uh i remember when i was in school they made that i think it was that building because that's a big white building, yes, it's a building. and the big uh, apartment was just being made just in front of my school, so that was funny. Beautiful, huh? Okay, uh, even more impressive and even more uh, game-changing for me, visiting Rotterdam, uh, 
uh, as a Dutch person, eh? I'm talking as a Dutch person, was uh, very important that they changed the central station because it was okay, but it was not like super nice. But then they came up with this and it's inspiring all other cities to do the same. And it just, it just looks amazing. And they just put all kinds of shops in there. So even to be there is like a whole event. Like they have amazing things for food, for to, to amazing things to eat. Uh, and, and they have Starbucks, which is also relatively new uh, in Holland. And uh, I mean, not in Amsterdam, but like in Rotterdam, relatively new. So yeah, when they built this, like everybody was super happy that they made all those shops also. And then it just, the architecture is just like amazing. <laughs> that building behind or just next to it uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I forget National Nederlander and uh, just below is a Dow Egberts and uh, me with my brother-in-law and his wife we and we went there to have uh, a coffee and uh, so if they're watching hey <laughs> and uh, it's very very nice place to have coffee it's just here under that kind of globe it's called Dow Egberts because Dow Egberts is the most famous coffee in Holland and it's epic Okay, so that's all my facts. I have to tell you this story. Uh, this um, this part of the bridge, uh, it's yeah, it's a part of a bridge. Uh, this is another bridge. It's very nice. And this part, uh, I usually go to to like hang out in summer. And you have terrace here, which are not showing, but it's on this side. Very, very, very nice. I used to go running to there, around there, uh, well, because you have a park there, a bit like Central Park, but the Dutch version. And um, this building is very interesting because one part of this building is in Holland and the other part is in the US. So it's a very famous story. It's basically like our Eiffel Tower that we shared with, uh, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Number eight, Zanze Chance. I the don't know Zanze Zanze Chance. Chance is a I'm so sorry. I know a lot, but not everything. And I don't know why it's on number eight. So that means that I have to go and visit it. Zanze Schans? I don't know anything. That's weird. I don't even know where it is. An open air conservation area and museum about 20 minutes from Amsterdam. It displays the traditional architecture of the area from the 17th and 18th century and contains black and green traditional wooden houses, several functioning windmills, and... I'm going to talk a lot less now, so you can watch the video more. Uh, but I just with Rotterdam, I wanted to give you all my like personal story and facts. So I hope that's not annoying. Craftsman workshops, which are open to visitors. The windmills this performed looks, a uh, wide range of industrial duties. Okay, this kind of bridges uh, in Schiedam. You really should out check out Schiedam also on Google. Uh, we have them a lot and we call them Opalbrug because you can like do like this. This one is electric, but the uh, Ophaalbrug, you do it with hand. You can do it with hand because they're really uh, uh, much smaller. And uh, yeah, that just reminds me of Schiedam again. <laughs> That's funny. Including wood sawing, threshing grains, and for the production of things like seed and... It's funny because it looks a bit like Kinderdijk, which is like the most famous uh, tourist attraction with all the windmills. Not oil. Holland. It looks a bit like Kinderdijk. I was responding to a commercial, <laughs> sorry. Why do I not know this? Like, is it because I'm not from around Amsterdam? I'm... Maybe I did not grow up around there. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Uh, this is nice. This reminds me a little bit, uh, just a little bit of Volendam, which is also one of the famous cities in Holland. Um, which has this kind of very funny uh, colored buildings and it's also famous for Grook de Paling, which is a kind of smoked fish, very long. Uh, I never had it personally, but I hear from everybody that it's really nice. I never been to Volendam, so, but I, 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 uh, it reminds me a bit of that, but like then every building is in color. For Dutch people it's famous. Also, a lot of singers are from there in Holland, but they sing mainly in Holland and German, but in Dutch and German, so. so yeah. This kind of buildings, you see them everywhere, like, and this kind of 
windmills too. Even when I was in Tessel, I remember we, we saw the, uh, these kind of buildings. So those one are more the old fashioned windmills, which are like with, um, they're made out of stone, but they're covered with like, um, um, uh, not old fashioned, but like the, the traditional, they're covered with a, a straw thing, I guess, like they put on houses sometimes. And uh, it makes a really nice uh, effect the way they look. And um, in Schiedam, in my city, uh, uh, they are made out of stone uh, and they're uh, bigger. And in Delft too, they have some big ones, which I went inside some too, uh, which is really uh, nice to do, to go inside the, uh, uh, a windmill and to just uh, discover. It's really, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. And then in Schiedam, uh, the one makes uh, a lot of uh, uh, things that I put on my Instagram too, if you want to see. Uh, it, it's having a, it's making still uh, things for cooking bread, uh, making things, uh, cooking uh, muesli, cooking things already made, and with uh, with uh, how do you say that in English? The well, what they make inside to make bread, uh, the they they grain it uh, fresh, so it's very nice. In uh, Schiedam, the windmill is called the the Walvis, and he has very good products. <laughs> Yeah, this is a cool video. Yeah, you see? A uh, cool city, I mean, sorry. Cool video too. Both. Yeah, this place looks interesting. I might visit it one day. Number seven, Utrecht. Ah. One of the oldest cities in the country, Utrecht's winding canals twist their way around its delightful medieval center. Which... Okay, Utrecht, uh, one of my personal favorites. Again, I discovered it with uh, 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 somebody from another country. And they have one of the biggest G-Star short stores. And it's just, it's like the, we in Holland we call it the Venice of Holland, which basically like every city is the Venice. <laughs> but Utrecht is because it's you have a lot of canal and at that canal you have a lot of restaurants and it's a very special experience um, also the shopping mall and everything Utrecht is just epic city really which has the arrestingly beautiful cathedral towering above it yeah oh. those restaurants I think it's actually if I'm not lying that restaurant Il Pozo I think it's where I had a coffee and uh, I was there uh, this spring and uh, it was nice weather and it was just amazing experience. I love Utrecht. I really love it. Although Utrecht. the sprawling suburbs do not make the best impression as you enter the city, it's tangled web. Also, you can go canoe, uh, which I did uh, when I was younger. And it's also a very fun experience. But mostly now it's to like canoe uh, in a canoe. Uh, you do it more for fun and uh, yeah, not everybody wants to do that. So that's more like when you're younger or like more sportive. It's more fun to like sit at the uh, restaurants and go shopping. Powering above it. Although yeah. the sprawling suburbs do not make the best impression as you enter the city, its tangled web of roads are soon forgotten once you get a feel for this lively place. Normally here too, it's full of like restaurants. And I think if I'm not correct, the Cano place was here on the left. <laughs> so yeah, that's funny. I'm seeing all this detail. And there's a shop here that I guess is the shop, if I remember correctly, it's selling board game. It's fun atmosphere. Thanks in part to its yeah, huge here. student population, the city has of loads students. of cheap and cheerful bars and cafes, as well as lots. The most famous student cities in Holland are uh, Utrecht and uh, Rotterdam, uh, I would say. It's very, very famous for that. And also Maastricht, because Maastricht, you have Dutch, uh, Belgian people and also German people, so it's, yeah. ...of great eating options. It's a good place to go clubbing. They have a lot of bars here, what they just showed. Uh, here you have a lot of bars and everything. Here. This is cool. I, I've never been there, but this looks like a real big... Uh, uh, 
and it reminds me of another um how do you say chateau in english a uh, castle uh that um i uh i i went and i saw and in holland we have quite a lot of castles like this and it's beautiful it's amazing this one looks really epic I, I might be crazy, but I have the feeling I visited it when I was uh, in uh, another city. Or it's a castle that looks like this one. But I remember I was very impressed. Number 6. Maastricht. Located ah, in the southernmost talking. tip of the Netherlands, Maastricht's proximity to Belgium and Germany makes it a popular destination for citizens of both nations as well as the Dutch themselves. Yes, uh, it's a very international, it has a very international uh, vibe to it because it's uh, bordering two countries. And also it's a lot of students and also um, I, I went there on holidays but I, I was so young that I don't remember. So the city itself, I will have to visit it very soon because it, it looks very nice. And they put it in top 10. So. A vibrant place. Its streets thrum with life. And the I city is French, home so. to a multilingual <laughs> and multicultural population, as exemplified by its large student body hailing from all around Europe. As such, it is a mix. Ah, this reminds me of Delft too. Like in Holland, we have a lot of places like the, in Utrecht too. Uh, where uh, in Schiedam too, uh, where you have this kind of square, and in the square you have like four or five or six different uh, restaurants and terraces uh, that belong to those restaurants, and that's very cool. Also, like in, as a tourist, you you will love that. Mix of cultures and very different from other Dutch cities. Especially in Delft, uh, there is uh, in Schiedam and in Delft there are those squares which I really love. But it's in every city in Holland, in Haarlem too, in uh, everywhere. Leiden. Uh... It's during Christmas, I see. I love it, uh, being in. Um, in Holland during Christmas because they always put so much decoration like especially like Amsterdam and uh, it's really nice see they just put uh, decoration everywhere it's like in German in Germany too they do this a lot and they have very nice uh, Christmas markets too but in Holland too I always love the atmosphere in general with this, all the lights and all the details. Number five, Number Kinderdijk. Five. Kinderdijk is a beautiful landscape of empty marshes and waterways near the city of Rotterdam. To drain right. its excess water from the polders, which are situated below sea level, nine. It's uh, not far from, oh, she's gonna say something that I don't know, but I've been there and it's very beautiful. Like, it's like, heaven for people who like to make pictures it's insanely beautiful and i again never went there when i was a kid discovered it with uh foreigners Rotterdam. to drain its excess water from the polders which are situated below sea level 19 windmills were built here around 1740 they have been well preserved okay. to the present day and can that. still be used although enormous mechanical pumps have taken over their task in summer, wow. tall reeds line the canals, lily pads float on the water, and bird calls break the silence. It's a wonderful really nice. and quintessentially Dutch landscape <laughs> to- He's, uh, he's, uh, he's surfing on an electric surfboard. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> wander through. Yeah, that's really, it's just, if you go to Holland, go to Kinderdijk and Keukenhof, like epic attractions or sightseeing places, sorry. Some of them, some of them were working while we were there. Some of them. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a very low voice. I have a small cold, so don't pay attention to that. That's why sometimes I have to drink a bit. 
I have a small cold because I'm an idiot. I went swimming in like 20, uh, 12 degrees <laughs> in my pool. I had this crazy idea that it was still not uh, so cold, but it was. And <laughs> it was not a good idea. <laughs> I really like the music they put also. Oh yeah. This is for me growing up in Holland, this is also Holland. I saw people responding to the Elf State of what is called the Elf Cities tour. Which is like a big tour we used to do in the past, but we cannot anymore because like it's very rare that it's like ten centimeters of ice. But I remember the last one was in the nineties. I saw it on TV. And uh like growing up as a Dutch person, you go skating always in um we, we always win medals also with skating. That's the reason, because we're crazy about skating. Uh, but every Dutch person goes skating in the winter and it's just an amazing experience. We also have a lot of inside skating places um, on ice, obviously I'm talking about on ice. And uh, they are very nice too. We go there when we are like in school and it's just nice. It's very, very nice. When in my school, I, I've been really lucky. In my school in Schiedam, it was even that nice that they made, uh, uh, they, 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 St. Joseph Stolhelle, if you're looking, you know what I'm talking about, people from my uh, school also. Uh, they made like water everywhere on the on the schoolyard and the schoolyard was inside the, the school, uh, like was inside, let's say a square inside. And, and they put water everywhere and they, fr they froze it. And like, as a kid, it's like heaven. Like you go out, you're done with your, uh, you have a break for one hour. And during the break, we're just skating. And it was even in the newspaper. I was in the uh, picture in the biggest newspaper. Uh, uh, they made a story about it. And I remember that very well because everybody the next time, Ruben, you're in the newspaper. I was like, okay. So yeah, and that was so cool growing up like that. I have been so lucky. Number four, The Hague. The so that's why we are epic skaters, because we just do it every, every chance we get. The Hague. That's a city I went to school. I went to hotel school. And it's famous because it's uh, one of the best hotel schools in Europe, along with the, the, the other one, which is in Switzerland. And uh, I went to uh, that hotel school and I had such a blast. It's such a beautiful city. This here is Scheveningen, which is a uh, link to The Hague. And um, that's like the best beach there is in Holland. We have a lot of beaches, but Scheveningen is like the most beautiful beach. So not the capital, The Hague is the seat of the Dutch government and is- I made a video there uh, also for regard, uh, res um, uh, responding to your vision. And we were too close to the sea, so you did not hear any noise, and it was an amateur mistake. I'm still sad about that, but uh, we did make some videos at the Coor House, which is, they're going to show it after. And I can ask my uh, uh, my my friend, to, my boyfriend, to put it, if he wants. Uh, because some videos we are, you're not hearing water, and you can see how beautiful it is. Referred to as... So here... We were walking here. It was uh, the same day we were. It was the day before we went to Utrecht. We went there just after people started leaving again after Corona, which was in uh, April, May, uh, just beginning of spring uh, this year. And uh, I have never seen Scheveningen that quiet. It was so, so quiet. Like we could just sit at any restaurant we were, we wanted. Well, usually you have to reserve days and weeks ahead and we we were so lucky perfect weather and this this uh, tower that you see here uh there were two girls and you can uh you can go uh how do you call that um what's that south park episode i'm getting a reference uh fuck i don't remember when you are hanging on a on a on a rope and you go down well you can do that from there until the pier until the end of the pier. And um, you can also go inside. There are a lot of shops and epic food. But uh, they they did that. And we watched them. And I made a picture. 
So when they were done, they came to us and they were like, can you please send me that uh, that picture? So I was just made a picture by accident uh, that somebody really liked. So you see when you make pictures, sometimes you get surprises. Uh, but that I remember that very well because it's not a lo long time ago. Uh, this part here, I don't know what it is exactly, but this is the big wheel. This is a, a, I think it is an aquarium. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but they made a new uh, uh, like party place too. And they're always adding a lot to this place. It's like, it's like the, the Saint-Tropez of Holland, basically. International city of peace and justice, because so many organizations devoted to world... Yeah, The Hague is the, inter the city of international peace and justice, where you have the famous uh, international court. And uh, this big place is the Kurhaus, which I was telling you about. That's the, uh, the most expensive hotel in all of Holland. And you also have a lot of casino uh, in Scheveningen and things like that, and theater and, um, and musicals. And uh, so here in the front, you have all those restaurants. I don't know when they made those images, but I don't think it's that long ago, but it's always so full and it's such an experience. A lot of art also. World peace can be found here. This bustling city of- but this hotel is amazing. Like. I watch a show in Holland where they talk about football sometimes uh, and they talk about all kinds of stuff. That's why I, I watch it because it's like a comedians and uh, um, very international if you're watching. Hey, <laughs> and they always go there when Holland is playing um, uh, the world. Uh, maybe I will be on TV with this. <laughs> hey, hello, RTL. Uh, you can hire me. Uh, this is uh, the... Uh, I'm even getting excited because I'm like, I have daddy, baby, it might happen. Um, so in this cool house, in this cool house, uh, they always sit just in the front there. They uh, comment and they have their show, uh, which is uh, the show uh, about like the European Cup and the World Cup. And it's always such an event because, you know, us Dutch people are crazy about football. Like we love our football and everybody's in orange and, and it's always such a good show and such a good atmosphere. So, yeah. Old World Charm is home to numerous museums that house some of the world's greatest... In its own, in its own, it's the most famous uh, hotel in all of Holland. And it's the most expensive, the most luxury, uh, or one of them. And uh, it's just amazing because you go outside, you have the beach right away. And you, yeah, if you're a foreigner, you, you go there. If you like want to have a really, really nice holiday. Um, and the, the food there is very famous. The chocolate and the food and like, yeah, it's very it's famous for several reasons. That house some of the world's greatest art collections. The Hague also is known for its seaside atmosphere. With Wait, what did she say? Art collections? Is home to numerous museums devoted to world peace can be found here. This bustling city of old world charm is home to numerous museums that house some yep. of the world's greatest art collections. The it's true. There are a lot of museums there. And um, the other museum that I went there, I did not go to museums there, but I went to um, uh, to go shopping for antique. Because in The Hague, you have a very famous like antique uh, market in Amsterdam too, but in The Hague especially too. Like basically all of Holland, we have this kind of flea market things. But in The Hague and in, uh, in uh, Amsterdam, it's very famous. And the one in The Hague is really, really nice. Really nice. It's a really beautiful city, The Hague, and it's very famous in Holland. The Hague also the is world. known for its seaside atmosphere, with great beaches and dunes. Those 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 buildings I always used to like. I was always like mesmerized by them because when I went back from school to from Den Haag to Schiedam, I always used to watch them. And I was always like, oh, I love going back and seeing those buildings. Seaside atmosphere with great beaches and dunes that stretch along the coast for as far as you can see. Yeah, that's those buildings. And I used to like the first Starbucks ever was in The Hague. Uh, uh, no, in Amsterdam and then in The Hague. So in the station. So I was like crazy as a child because growing up, I saw all the movies in the U.S., and, and, and I always saw Starbucks and I was always like, I want a Starbucks. <laughs> and they made it and I was like, I can have a Frappuccino. Like it now, now it's like normal, it's like everywhere. But like, you know, it arrives very late and seeing that as a kid growing up, you're like, oh, I want that. <laughs> and now, now, now in Amsterdam and all over Holland, 
in Rotterdam also you have like all those places from US that are famous like Dunkin Donuts and all this kind of thing. I think even Wendy's and uh, yeah, uh, Taco Bell also I think. Okay, so this, I, I used to walk here a lot because I used to go to the train station, but it's not far. This is the place where it's the government and it's uh, beautiful to watch. And they call this the, basically they call that tower, that small, that tower that you see there. Uh, they, ca they call it the Toren, the tower, because the, pre the president apparently uh, works there a lot. If, am I say, say, yeah, no, I think what I'm saying is true. And it's the whole building. So it's very famous. Uh, I've walked through here. I remember this golden fountain, which is beautiful, and this church. Uh, sometimes I used to take a sneaky road here because uh, then I used to go to my school faster because I could take like a shortcut. It's funny that I know all these places. I will tell you why it's funny also because in Holland uh, we have the Randstad. Uh, look it up on Google which is like one third of the population lives there. And it's like you have North Holland and South Holland. That's like where the Randstad is. And um, that's where I'm from also, from Schiedam. And you have Rotterdam, Amsterdam, The Hague. Uh, you have all the big cities there. And uh, all, the, all the cities that are big, that are close to the big city. So, yeah. One third lives there of the population a lot huh? that's why uh netherlands is a small country uh very populated in those areas but you still have a lot of nature and especially around uh you have a lot of wildlife and nature left because a lot of people live in the Randstad. it's funny how that works huh so uh this looks very uh pittoresque and no not pittoresque that's the french word i uh, idyllic idyllic it looks like a fairy tale <laughs> I want to go there, like it looks like a Japanese garden and I'm crazy about Japanese gardens. That's why I go to Kokonov and I, I'm getting even more excited about it than the tourist itself usually. Because there's such a good atmosphere and they have this kind of garden there. And, uh, and of course the uh, enormous amount of tulips. Tremendous. Number three, Delft. A popular day trip destination from Amsterdam, ah, it is easy. My brother-in-law is from Delft. Hello, Bart. And he took us on a tour, like with my uh, boyfriend and his uh, brother and his uh, wife. So my sister-in-law. And um, Sebastian Michel, hey. And, <laughs> and uh, then you have, uh, we went to Delft and he took us on a whole big tour. And uh, he did a lot of things. He took us to a... Uh, uh, a moulin uh, windmill and we had a tour inside uh, we went to the uh, terrace he showed us uh, very special places and he, he, he's a kind of clown guy he likes to make jokes so what he did he had this kind of uh, claw just because he grew up there and he was a kind of um, how do you say that in, in English uh, rascal a little bit you know when he was younger and it, he, he used to like fish uh, out uh, because you have a lot of canal in Delft you used to take out uh, bikes with that claw so when my uh, boyfriend and his brother had arrived with there he, he was doing that like he made us a surprise and he did it he like hey look you see this I'm going to use it and he put his thing in the canal which is right in the center so people were all staring at us like what is he doing and he took out a bike like one or two and he took out a lot of other stuff and I'm like okay this is the, the place where young people just throw their bikes when they get drunk, you know, that's happened a lot like in Amsterdam and all the cities in Holland, but like, um, yeah, that was so funny. It was a, that, that experience will always stay in my head. And I think with my boyfriend and his brother and his sister too. To see what makes Delft such an attractive option his wife with its lovely so medieval center <laughs> and picturesque canals. Um, so I go option. back. With its lovely this is uh, one of the most beautiful buildings they have. Um, my sister actually got married inside here. So Jantina and Bart, hey. 
they got married there and it was epic it's beautiful inside uh, and here you have a lot of restaurants and those restaurants are very very nice i i went there a lot uh medieval center and picturesque and have, canals crossed by brick bridges yeah. and lined with trees then of course you have the architecture which is amazing the city is quaint and peaceful its most famous son the painter johannes vermeer is yeah johannes vermeer is from there and you also have delft's blau and this big tower is um for the royal family uh where they uh bury uh all the royal family when a royal person dies they bury them um under uh, there's like a whole like cave under <laughs> and um yeah this is a, a beautiful beautiful uh, uh church also and tower so uh very uh interesting stuff going on in delft which like uh, this is i think uh also for weddings but also i think it's um how do you call it when there is a mayor, I think he, he lives there. I'm not sure, 100%. The city is quaint and peaceful. Its most famous son, the painter Johannes Vermeer, is just one of many who has sung its praises over the ages. Famous for yeah. the distinctive blue and white tiles and ceramics that are produced here, visiting Delft the Delftware very factories nice. is popular among tourists. But despite its wealth of beautiful- you see? It's just bikes. And they just fall in the water sometimes or people throw them when they're drunk. And he just get them out with the thing. So this is uh, Delft is mo most famous for Vermeer because Vermeer is you know the lady with the milk. That's Vermeer. He's like super famous. And um, then you have also Delft's Blau, which is that kind of. I think they're gonna show it in the video. So. Old buildings. It is the atmosphere rather than any particular attraction. Ah, uh, also this we have it in Schiedam. Uh, it's uh, in a lot of cities in Holland too. Where you where you go on a boat to eat and drink, a very unique experience, especially in summer. It's really really nice. That makes it worth visiting. Yeah, those boats. And this is what is nice with Delft. It's really like inside. Uh, it almost looks like the well, the houses are in the water, but it's like kind of like a bit like Venice. And uh, that's very special with Delft and with uh, also with Schiedam. But uh, uh, like when you live in, uh, for example, uh, a building like this, I think for the people who live there, sometimes it can get a bit, uh, um, how do you say that in a polite way, uh, kind of annoying because like you wake up and the first thing you see is like a tourist boat. <laughs> because in Holland, all the windows are open. Uh, um, because we are Protestant, so it's like uh, you live not everywhere, like it's a mix. But uh, uh, Protestants always never co cover the windows. <laughs> so when you just wake up in your day kit, you see a tourist, but they're like, hey. <laughs> uh -huh. So yeah, Delft, definitely go there. Very, very nice city. And I had one of the best trope waffles there also. Nice restaurants, just a lot of things to see, a lot of things Number to do. Number two, really nice. tulip field, stretching endlessly into the distance. And it's very, very close to uh, where I'm from, Schiedam. And it's also very, very close to Rotterdam. So you have everything around. The Netherlands' colorful tulip fields yeah, are one of its fields. most evocative sights. Ever since the late 16th century, when the beautiful bulbs first arrived and tulip mania struck Europe, visitors have been attracted to its fantastic flower beds and lavishly landscaped gardens. By far the biggest and best of its flower parks is Kuchenhof, home to around 7 million tulips, daffodils, and roses. My Cycling around place. Holland's fetching fields is a delight with loads of great... is so nice because like it's the beginning of spring. I was born in spring, so I usually go there for my to celebrate my birthday also, but it's just the beginning of spring and there's just such an amazing in atmosphere, all the cherry trees, all the tulips, and it's just it's just like a fairy tale. Like if you did not visit Kokonov, go. It's between uh the beginning of spring, so between like twenty of March and uh 20 of may or 20 of june even no, i think 20 of may like spring yeah great photos to be had of pretty purple orange and red flowers waving in the wind and there is a documentary about 
how they make Gokunov and it's very impressive. I saw it on TV. I don't know if I can find it on YouTube and maybe respond to it, but it's very impressive how they maintain it and it takes so much work. It's so impressive. The different weather circumstances and how they deal with it. It's very interesting. Yeah. But most of all, it just looks epic. It really is like, it's like a fairy tale, really. Like, this is not the park that they're showing because maybe they don't have the right or I don't know, but the park itself is just, oh. It's one of the most beautiful things I ever saw in my life, really. And that's strange because it's like, usually you have to search for that in another country, but <laughs> it's not in my own country. Number one. Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a pleasant city marked by meandering canals. Yeah, I agree with the list. I just find it a shame that they don't put, for example, Schiedam, which would be, they, they put Zaanse Schans. Okay, I can understand that. And if you have to choose between Schiedam and Delft, um, maybe Delft is more famous because of the whole royal thing and the painters and the Delft's, uh, the porcelain, the Delft's blau. So I get why they put Delft, but they, should put also Schiedam to make a top 11 maybe because Schiedam is very very it has a lot going on lined with tall narrow row houses it is the city where Anne Frank kept her most famous diary yeah that's my one of my favorite places in Amsterdam is the Anne Frank Museum I visited not only once but twice and I, I, I just I don't know I find it very impressive impressive and when you go there I can recommend you not to eat before because the restaurant inside is amazing. They have amazing food, really. So visiting the house where she wrote it is a must. This Venice of the North also is a city of great art, beginning with the Rijksmuseum, home to great European masterpieces. That's one of the things, okay, I have to share with you this story. So, Rijksmuseum was in a, uh, is a very, is the biggest uh, museum in all of Holland, and also the Van Gogh Museum, of course. But the Rijksmuseum is the biggest one. And you have a lot of paintings from Rembrandt and uh, uh, from Van Gogh also. But most of them are, of course, in the Van Gogh Museum. And uh, from Vermeer, also the one with the milk lady. Uh, and a lot of paintings. And they made a whole, like, uh, renovation. And it took 15 or 20 years or something. So it was closed for, for a very long time. And then it opened again in 2013. And when it opened, I was so lucky that I was there at the opening. And it was epic because it was only small groups of people. So at one point I was just alone because the people moved on to, and I was just standing like observing the pain. I was alone with, of course, of course there was some security people, but that was it. And I was looking at the paintings. I was like, I was like in awe. I was like amazed, like, okay, I have actually the chance to be here the first day it opened after the renovation see these paintings that are like the one the most famous paintings in the world like the Nachtwacht all those paintings all those kind of paintings from uh, Rembrandt and Vermeer and Van Gogh it was insanely uh, it has uh, it made such an impact on me and I had the chance to be there so Rembrandt's house and the more modern Van Gogh Museum Take a break from sightseeing to tour and sample Holland's beer and the Heineken Brewery. Yeah, that's around here also. That's like, we call it the beer, uh, the beer factory. And it's, uh, um, it's very famous for tourists and uh, also students and people who just like to, to drink and have like, uh, uh, want to have an experience of how the beer is made, etc. And you can drink at the same time and it's also a bar. Uh, it's just a very, I can recommend you the beer, uh, beer factory to go there and it's around here. So look it up. Uh, and then also the Heineken, of course, is from Amsterdam. And yeah, I understand why they put Amsterdam on number one, because it's the most, uh, uh, yeah, it's the most famous and the most impactful city uh, in Holland. Okay, so this is the central station, which is like a, a, a sightseeing on its own. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> ah, that's the Rijksmuseum here. You go inside here, and then you have the Rijksmuseum. It's epic. It's, it's epic. 
So, the, I was just talking to you about the Nachtwacht and that's this painting. And uh, I already said in another video that like it, the Mona Lisa is maybe the most famous, but this one should be. Uh, because uh, Mona Lisa is very small and this one is huge. <laughs> so, and this one is just full of details and it's just an amazing, amazing painting. We get a lot of uh, education about it when we are young in school also. Which when we are old we forget usually, but uh, that's why you go back to the museum to learn it again. And uh, you have, for example, this girl in, in white, which is very expressive. And it's a painting that was made in the time where the Dutch were having the VOC in the Dutch East India Company. And when they were doing all their discoveries, because they were the first to like trade, um, discover uh, India, uh, 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 Asia and to uh, take, um, how do you say, uh, ingredients from those countries, not ingredients, how do you call that? Spices from those countries. And they used like uh, uh, cinnamon and all those kind of stuff. And uh, th they used to be worth sometimes even more than a house. So yeah, like it was like a, a very amazing time. And from that time, there are a lot of paintings. And there's also a lot of paintings with fruit, with boats also, that are very amazing. They're on this uh, museum. Uh, with fruits, uh, uh, you see a lot uh, also, but also a lot with the people who were in that time and they paint them. Um, there's another video I can make a reaction. They paint them uh, really like showing what was happening at that time. They were like showing themselves and the painter was painting them. And yeah, there were just uh, a lot of paintings like that and a lot of paintings with like the food they were eating. That's why we call it still lever in Dutch. It's a lot of uh, fruit, cheese and wine um, paintings that are very beautiful and very famous. And uh, a mix of uh, that still lever with those people from the Dutch East uh, Company, which are very beautiful to watch. Also, the architecture in itself is just insanely beautiful in Amsterdam. Like, it's like you see those pointy things. You know, it's just it's really, really good, really beautiful. And in Schiedam too, you have this uh, this kind of building. That's why I'm sad Schiedam is not inside. I I, I guess they should have done it uh, because it's a it's just so so beautiful and cozy city. You know, but Amsterdam is. Uh, it's huge, so uh, I understand why it's number one. I really understand that. And the architecture, what what I find so special with Amsterdam all, all, also, because I, I went there a lot when I was young, uh, is when you go there, like you arrive, you have a lot of tourists and everything, of course, but then you go in the center, and the center part where you have all the canals, it's just very quiet. And like, it's just, it's just, it's just very quiet and very beautiful architecture. And you're like, yeah, you like you can have a nice walk and it's very peaceful. And also, I forget to say that we have the gay parade here uh, in those canals, which is the biggest gay parade, uh, uh, the only gay parade with boats in the whole world, I think. And it's it's just so epic because like it's not a, a LGBT. Uh, a thing it's just everybody goes there it's just uh it is lgbt thing but like it's just the atmosphere because like all the people from the city and from all over holland go there because it's just so much fun it's so much fun and we have that exact same atmosphere with king's day and then you i remember i was there three years ago and there were so many boats and everything orange just insanely insanely beautiful and um yeah, it's just a big party. So those two days are usually very clubby for Dutch people, where Dutch people go out and go to Amsterdam and to The Hague to, to do King's Night, which is before King's Day. And then you have King's Day and, 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 and also the, uh, the gay parade. And uh, then, then those kennels in, 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 in Amsterdam are full, full of boats. And it's just an amazing experience. If you're not Dutch, if you're Dutch, it doesn't matter. It's just you should do those two things. King's Day is um, April, around April, end of April. And uh, the Cape Parade is in the summer. So 
around like August. Ah, oh, this is Amsterdam. Yeah, okay, I remember. Yeah, this is Amsterdam. Because in a way it looks uh, small, it looks a bit like Leiden. That's the other city that I, I'm a big, big fan of Leiden also. Um, and Harlem too. Uh, that uh, very, very beautiful, very, a lot of like cozy kennel um, uh, places like in Schiedam and Delft. And uh, yeah, Schiedam and, 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 and um, Leiden have this a lot, a lot, a lot. And it's uh it's very beautiful. It's uh like uh like in Amsterdam, but like on a more cozy, more smaller. So so like it's even more like quiet, and uh, which some people like, other people want more like. But I I like both. I like both. So I think I said everything. <laughs> this is the boat experience I talked to you about. Amsterdam is so amazing. Like I would not put any other city on number one. It's just Amsterdam is like, yeah, that's a, that's a very special city. Ah, this is a very famous because you have a lot of tulips and stuff, and you have a big, a huge flower market because we are the number one exporter of flowers. Also, so yeah, uh, I hope I covered everything. We did not need the lady speaking in this video. I have more facts. Okay, <laughs> no, she had some more facts than me, but. Uh... I have more, my own story. Red light district. Yeah, in the 90s, uh, especially, but still, but Holland was more famous for like the the smoking weed and the prostitute. And it's still, it's still, but like, um, yeah, Amsterdam has that also, uh, which is uh, very, very famous. I have a funny story. Okay, I was thinking about this telling it or not. When I was a teenager, for the first time with school, we went to Amsterdam to see this uh, VOC, uh, the Dutch Indi East Indy Company ship, and the Bi Bi Biome Museum. And then we were let free. We were, they told us, literally, literally, they told us, you have one and a half hours now to do whatever you want. And we were teenagers, horny teenagers. <laughs> we were just like, okay, we do whatever, we can do whatever we want. First place we go, the places where they can smoke weed and the prostitutes. Because <laughs> that's how sick you are, you know, and you're a teenager. And also, uh, uh, there was a, a porn museum where we went to, which is quite ex uh, uh, um, impressive. I can, I can uh, honestly advise you to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the porn museum. So I was here with friends and we were walking here. We were all around like 15 and <laughs> one guy decided to go inside to this porn house place, a uh, red light uh, district place, to ask the price, like how, how much does it cost to... And, 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 and then he got into trouble because they knew he was just joking around and he didn't want to pay. So we were outside just waiting for him and it took like 30 minutes and he was being investigated and everything. <laughs> and when he came out, he was in shock and we were all dying laughing. We said, what happened? Yeah, I had to explain because they knew I didn't want to. Because <laughs> he was coming inside, you know, laughing. And uh, so so, so we were we were talking for that, about that story for years and years and years. And, and that guy was just... We kind of tease them with it, with that all the time, you know. So you can see that uh, there are a lot of um, funny things happening when you give freedom suddenly to like teenagers. <laughs> so uh, I hope you like this story. I have the best memories about it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the end of this video. I have to be professional now. Sorry. <laughs> They basically drag him in, and then that they in, in, uh, in, 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 uh, how do you say, like, uh, they keep speaking with him for very, very long. <laughs> and we were just, like, outside and just laughing. Yeah, it's just something special for me. I hope you enjoyed that story. <laughs> for me, it's funny. So, Pure Opia, thank you very much for this video. And for making me memorize that, that uh, story. Uh, also, um, 
if you go to Holland, uh, 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 first of all, uh, uh, subscribe to Turopia because they made this video. Even though I don't agree completely with it, it's fine. So uh, tell me uh, if you guys agree with it, Dutch people or non-Dutch people. Uh, also tell me if you liked all my uh, little uh, personal uh, stories and if you enjoyed it. And also tell me if, um, if you uh, go to Holland, uh, where you would go and why. So yeah, that's all for me. Uh, my, my video is longer than one hour. I didn't do that since I made a live stream, like reacting to like uh, Melody Grand Prix and Melody Festival, which are um, uh, song uh, competition festivals in Norway and Sweden for uh, Eurovision, where they decide who wins and who goes to Eurovision. So I made like two, three hour streams, which you can see in my videos. Uh, but uh, otherwise I never made a video longer than one hour. So this is actually fun for me because as you can see, I like to speak. I love to speak. <laughs> I'm full of like uh, inside information, small anecdotes, details. I have a very good memory. And this is just something I like to do because um, it's my hobby and it's my uh, job, uh, hopefully in the future. So you guys, I hope you enjoy this as much as me. Don't forget to subscribe to me also, not only to Turopia, but also to Ruby Reacts. Also, I'm wearing G-Star proudly. This shirt is like an amazing color, right? And I bought it uh, um, in uh, Rotterdam. So just a small inside information. Um, uh, also, I would like you to subscribe, to uh, comment, and also to leave a like. And don't forget to be yourself and also be always be yourself. And be nice to yourself and each other because that's what it's all about. Don't forget to stay hydrated, especially don't don't catch a cold. Like it, it, it's getting uh, it, it, there. It's times where the cold is coming back, and we are not really prepared for this because October was not that cold. So pay attention to your body, and yeah, I'm always giving small medical advices because uh, I I hate being like sick if it's even if it's like a very small thing. I, I, I really don't like it. <laughs> so stay hydrated and take good care of your body and cover yourself when it's cold out there because it's getting really cold now. Mm. That's a free advice. Uh, <laughs> lots of people are saying, why are you telling me what to do? I'm like, well, just trying to help. Hey, you guys, see you next video. And that's all gonna be for me. Okay, I'm gonna say it in Dutch because it's about hold on. Doei doei. Big hugs and love you too from here until Mars and Jupiter and the moon. Ciao! <laughs>